here's a question. I just want to pause before we even say the question. Because what I'm about to do is, I'll show you how it's done. But at, as I try to do all the time, right, I want to do more than just show you how to get the answer, right? Because as you'll see shortly, um, like the amount of working for this is, is not incredible, right? But more importantly, the amount of working that goes into this uses things that are very, very simple. Like stuff you learn in year eight, year 10, early year 10. Um, it's, not, it's not groundbreaking stuff. So why is it that we, 11 MTX1, 12 MTX1 even, why are we having trouble with this question? Okay, because honestly, like, I think it's okay to have trouble with this question. The question is why, right? Let's have a look and unpack it. They say you've got a right angle triangle um, and it's sides are A, B, and C. Groundbreaking so far, I know, okay? Now, they then say a couple of things about B, right? Two, like, imaginary situations. And then they ask you to find this. This is the actual question. Find this ratio, okay? Now, for starters, let me give you a suggestion as to why this is a weird question. You don't even know where to start. How, when was the last time you got asked to find a ratio, right? We get asked to find a value, solve for this, or add up whatever, write all 104s, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas this, it's, it's just phrased in a weird way, okay? Now, don't forget, a ratio, rational numbers, right? Therefore, all it really wants is this fraction. If you can write that fraction, then you're done. That's what the ratio is, okay? That's the first thing. Secondly, um, usually in a right angle triangle, we know, you know, C is the hypotenuse. Usually it doesn't matter which one A and which one is A and which one is B. In my diagram, at least though, and almost every single one of the ones that I've seen, it does matter which one is A and B. Which one has to be B? I've got two scenarios that B could be. One's the AM, one's the GM, right? In either case, uh, are you satisfied that B is going to be between A and C? Do you agree with that? C is the longest side in the triangle, therefore A has to be the shortest one, right? You have the shortest, then the intermediate length, and then the longest one. Not that it matters, just an aside, you'll just have some weird diagrams if your arithmetic mean is somehow smaller than... anyway. Okay, so, these are now my scenarios. Let's start with what we know, the easy stuff, which is, I know what... One question at a time. I know what the AM of A and C is. Okay, so let's just start off. I'm going to say B equals the arithmetic mean is just what we're used to thinking of as the, the average between these two numbers. Okay, so I'm going to add them together and then I'm going to half. No big deal. Okay, then the question becomes, well, what on earth do I do with that? Okay, where, where do I go from here? Okay, and remember, this is what I am trying to get to. There's my endpoint, as it were, right? If this is what I want, and this is what I know, then this clearly implies some kind of relationship. Like, this is equal to some number. Let's just make up something like, I don't know, uh, 2 over 9 or something like that. Okay. So, this isn't the answer, by the way. Uh, but if this were the answer, what this implies is that I can write A or C, right, either one of those, as a function of the other one. Right? For instance, in this case, I could say C equals 2 over 9A. Right? Like that would be, that line would precede this line. Okay? And then I'll just divide by A and Bob's your uncle, there's your ratio. Okay? So I want one in terms of the other. And I want to get, is Bob actually your uncle? Sorry. If that's the case, okay? So if you're, if you're a Bob and you're like an uncle, you've got nephews or nieces, you must be so frustrated. Anyway, okay. So therefore, now it's starting to become clear how I'm going to use this, right? Because I know it's a right angle triangle. That's about the only other thing I know. So therefore, I'm going to say the thing that I know about all right angle triangles, namely Pythagoras' theorem, right? Okay. Now, in scenario question A, I don't need to write B anymore. I'm going to re replace it with this. Okay. So Pythagoras' theorem for this triangle states this. Do you agree with that? That's just what Pythagoras looks like in this case. Okay. Now, this is what I want. This is my relationship between A and C. Admittedly, it's a bit messy in there, like it's, it's intertwined and that kind of thing, particularly this guy, okay? But that's all right. I work with these kinds of things all the time, right? All I want is A equals something, something C, or vice versa, C equals something, something A. So how do I tease it out? Uh, what kind of equation is this? What, what family of equations does it belong to? It's a quadratic, isn't it? Okay. Now, I can solve quadratics. I've been solving quadratics till the cows come home. 
how is what kind of format do I want this quadratic to be in so I can solve it easily? General. One in general form, right? Okay, so let's make it in general form. I'm gonna have to get everything on the left hand side and then it'll equal zero. Are you okay with that? Right, so let's just unpack it a little bit. First, I want to get rid of the fractions because general form tends not to have fractions in it. So what shall I multiply everything by? Four. Four, because it's actually two squared down there, right? So there's, there's a trick, watch out for it. So that gives me this. Okay, I've just multiplied through. And now I just want to get everything on one side, right? So let's see here. I'm going to expand on the left-hand side, which gives me this. And I have this on the right-hand side, okay? I can combine some like terms there, right? How many a squareds do I have? Five of them. How many c squareds do I have? Remember, I want it on the left. I have negative three of them. Minus three c squared. Are you okay with that? Okay. Now, this weirds out our brains a little bit, okay? Because it's a quadratic, but as it happens, it's a quadratic in a, it's also a quadratic in C, right? Our brain's not used to seeing quadratics that have two things in them, okay? But don't forget, all of these things, they're just numbers, they're just numbers. If I said C were equal to like five, right? This would be five A squared plus 10 A minus 75, okay? So it would just be another number, okay? Now that's what it would be if C equals, equals five, but the whole power of algebra is I can work with it even when I don't know what C is equal to, okay? So let me just make this a little more obvious. I want this in general form, right? I've already got an a squared term out the front, so I might as well make that my quadrant. Okay? So I'm going to go 5a squared. I'm just going to rewrite this as plus this. Now, what was the point of doing that? What's the point of writing it in that form? Okay? It's because I want an a squared term, an a term, and I want a constant term. Are you okay with that? There's my constant term. It's already sitting there. Okay. Now I've written it as a quadratic. What's the point of writing things, sorry, as a general quadratic? What's the point of writing it in such a form? And so I can do one of two things. I can either factorize it, right? Or if I'm too lazy to factorize, I can just chuck it into the formula. Do you guys want to factorize it? Is it hard to factorize? I don't think no, so. It's not, it's not. Let's think, I want a pair of numbers. Your brain's weeding out a little bit because there are proteins in it, but we can do this, right? I want a pair of numbers. What does the pair of numbers add to? Uh, two, 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 two. Two C. I think it adds to two C, right? C is just another number. Right? I don't know what it is, but it's there in the coefficient, isn't it? Okay, that was my. That's the reason why I put those brackets around it to try and make that a little more obvious. So I've got two numbers that add to two C. What do the numbers multiply to? 3c squared. Negative 5 times minus 3c squared. That's negative 15c squared. Something times something equals negative 15c squared. Okay, now just hold on so for a second. 3 fifths. Sorry? Shouldn't it be 3 fifths? Why? Because um, alpha beta is minus c. Uh, you're, thinking about, you're just thinking about the roots. I'm thinking about factorizing. Uh, Roots come after I factorize. Solutions come after I factorize. Okay. So just like just like when you're you're thinking of this, you're going a step forward. So <laughs> my favorite quadratic. The the numbers that factorize out of two and three, but the answers, the roots, what you're thinking of, are negative two and negative three. Right? So you've gone a step ahead. What are my pair of numbers, guys? Plus five C minus It'd be easy if you didn't have C's there, right? Clearly it's going to be 5 and negative 3. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Or rather 5c and minus 3c, okay? Um, so I would go 5c minus 3c. That works out. 5c minus 3c. Okay, so now I've broken it apart. What was I supposed to do with those? What, have I, what am I going to do with them now that I've got them? I can, I can put them into here now, right? I can write this in a form that will be easy for me. So if I write 5a squared, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll put 5c at the front, 
then I go minus 3c minus 3c squared equals 0. Yeah, are you okay with that? What am I doing here? This is one way among many that I can factorize. It's the whole point of coming up with this pair of numbers, right? Because now I don't have a trinomial. So I've got four got terms, right? Where? Where? Which one? Oh yeah, sorry. That's right. That's better. Okay. So now I've got my four terms and I can pair them up, right? What's my, um, my factor out here? 5a. 5a outside of? a plus c. Yeah? What am I going to take out here? 3c. <coughs> it works. Yeah, you okay with that? So now I've got this guy, 5a, take 3c, a plus c equals 0. Okay, so I've factorized and now I can read some solutions off this, right? Um, I can solve for c or I can solve for a, doesn't really matter, okay? If I let this equal um, 0, this guy over here, right, what solution do I get out of that for a? Minus three Wait, no, no. three C on five. C on five. Does it work? Three C just three. Is that a bit better? Yes. Oh, it's all right to me. Yeah. Um, I'll leave that for a second. I'll come back to it. I get a solution out of this, but I also get a solution out of this, right? What solution do I get out of this? Okay. Now I'm not done yet, right? I'm not done yet. Okay. You can't just pretend solutions don't exist, okay? I have two solutions out of here. I have to disregard one and I have to disregard it for a reason. I can disregard this one. Why? Because it's a language. Because, because both A and C have to be positive, right? Um, and the only way to make this true is if one of them is negative, okay? So, so therefore, um, but A is greater than zero, C is greater than zero, so that's not a real solution, okay? Out of here, now I can get to my answer which was c to a is the same as c divided by a, right? So I'll divide by c, which gives me this, and then I'll take the reciprocal, which gives me this. So my ratio is 5 to 3. Are you happy with that? Okay, now just let me make a note, because um, I want to say something a bit similar. If you, if you went the um, quadratic um, formula route from... Um, from here, right, from here, everything would be exactly the same and you just end here, right? But there's a slightly different way you can say it. You can save yourself a bit of time, okay? Um, I, I just, because I was lazy, I ended up doing that. So I got out from there, after, after some number of lines, I said A was equal to, now I get my plus or minus line like this. Mm. This is what ends up falling out. Okay, now I just want you to look at this for a second. Um, you can see where my minus 2c comes from, right? And then there's my discriminant and so on, okay? Now, at this second, at this second, before I even get to this a equals something, right, I can already discount a solution. Can you see why? Use a negative one. Because a is equal to one of two things, but one of the solutions is ridiculous. I don't even need to evaluate it, right? Because if you've got a negative number, and then you subtract something, you're going to get even more negative. Of course we know it's going to end up here, but you don't even need to know that it's going to end up there. At this point here, I can say, but A is positive, right? Therefore, it's got to be... Oh, that sounded pretty cool. Therefore, it must be this case. I can ignore the other case without even evaluating it, okay? So sometimes you will have to do that, like as in you'll have to get to you won't be able to factorize, okay? So therefore you might as well know that this trick exists. If you want something positive, you can ignore something that will clearly give you a negative without evaluating it, okay?